Crispy. That was a good one. Strong crack. Revelry must be packaging their beers a little tighter. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Revelry for uh, moving to Savannah, Georgia. So if you listen in the Savannah, Georgia area, they're just starting their uh, endeavor in 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 Georgia. So Distribution. That's pretty exciting for them. Yeah. Hit them up uh, if you're in Charleston, 10 Conroy Street. Hit up the Hold, new barrel-aged sour specialty beer place called The Hold. It's a lot of specialty beers if you're that kind of connoisseur. Woodworking by your boy if you're interested yeah. in something. Go over there. This is Holler true. at me. I got this a sweet true. sweet video coming out about that place Some not too cust- long. Custom woodworking going on. Um, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. Definitely go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're... Uh, Going live every Sunday, answering sit start questions. If you if you're subscribed and you hit the little notification bell next to the subscription button, you get notified anytime we go live or put out a new video. So just more ways for you guys to get in contact with us. Um, we're gonna finish up the rest of this free show here. We're gonna get into some uh, some question marks about guys that have been out of, out for a little while and are coming back. So we're gonna we're gonna delve into some of that. Um, we're gonna once we get done with this show, we're gonna head over to Patreon. And put out our uh, exclusive Patreon-only show. Um, get into some uh, listener questions and some um, maybe some Tennessee Titans. We got the, who, I don't know who much, knows what we're gonna do. I don't know how much there. time we'll have. Yeah, uh, might go to Bed Bath Beyond. Yeah, um, but knows? definitely if you guys aren't a, a Patreon, cash uh, in some gift cards. You can you can find a link from our website, theffdynasty.com, or you can go straight over to Patreon.com/slash theffdynasty. Um, it's a five dollar holla, so five bucks a month, less yeah. than a coffee that you probably get every single day. Just buy us a coffee once a month. That's all you got to do. There's tons of hours of content on there already. Get your questions answered. Anything you want to talk about, we'll we'll discuss on on a show for you. Um, trades, whatever you need. Yep. You know, we 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 got you over there. That's it's basically our our way of letting you into our little circle, and and we'll we'll help you out with with whatever we can. Right, because it's. You just, sometimes you need somebody to talk something over with, and we want to be that that ear for you and help you out with your with your teams and and your squads, kind of like we try to do here on this free show. Well, let's get into it. Enough talk, enough chit chat. Let's uh, let's talk about a little Mark Ingram. He's making his return this week. Uh, Alvin Kamara has obviously just been crushing it from a fantasy production standpoint. Um, we did discuss Mark Ingram last week on the on the Patreon show about what you should maybe be doing with him. Um, Let's start off with he's coming back. You've been holding him. Are you putting him right in your lineup right away when he gets back? Absolutely. Mark Ingram? Right. Sure. Must start. Must. I don't think you're going to see what what the end result of this season will be w- the first week he's back. Like I don't I'm not sure you're going to see I, I think you're going to see a good amount of carries in Mark Ingram's uh under Mark Ingram's belt by the time the season uh rolls forward. I'm 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 going to say 10 12 you'll see in this first game back with with a couple of catches catches. in there so i don't see any reason i mean kamara's been awesome there's right nothing short of he has been absolutely ridiculous you can thank him later for everything he's done for you this year Mm. if you have him um you know i i was concerned coming into this season about what he was going to do and if it was sustainable and the pace he's on right now is probably not sustainable. And then you get Mark Ingram coming back and maybe you see a, a slight dip in, in what Kamara has been doing, but he's so efficient with his touches and, and what he does through the air is really is, is the special part about what Mark Ingram or uh, Alvin Kamara is giving you yeah. week in week out. I mean, he's it's, it's almost, it's, it's unfair. He's catching the ball with, with so much space in front of him. And, and then he's already a guy who's very hard to bring down. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's just Saints, a really Saints backfield X's and O's. But uh, what the thing that I thought, you know, that you were going to, you have seen uh, Kamara struggle with was, was kind of the goal line work and he's been getting some goal line work. So even the games where you were like, mm, I had this guy finally contained and he's not going to absolutely kill me where there's no chance I can win this week. He's been getting those carries from the two, the three right. inside the five or 10. And I do think some of that shifts now back to Ingram, even though Kamara has been just fine. Most times I can, doing so. I completely agree with that. I think the Saints would rather have Ingram taking those handoffs anyway. Just and if to they want to be who both they fresh, if they want to be who they who everyone projected them to be before the seasons, the Saints, that is, I think you do need to 
help let let Ingram help shoulder right. the load. Right, right along the same idea there. They're three and one, but it could uh, give you such a different until, identity when you and, got a guy like Ingram who can and, punch you in the face. Until they got to play against Eli Manning, their defense looked horrible. Absolutely horrible to start the year. So maybe together with you know Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara, maybe they still put up crazy numbers, both of them, because their defense isn't going to get to play against Eli Manning every week. Um, You're I've, able to slow the games down once Ingram comes into pace. Like that's true. Uh, I, I got Michael a Thomas was on pace for 200 receptions before right. this last game. Right, right, no doubt. And His I, I got, are going to fall. I off. got a couple. I got a, I got two or three teams I can think of off the top of my head where a Mark Ingram's not a must start this week back. Like if you got a couple of really good running backs and you don't have to put him in your lineup good for you like sure. if you got mark ingram coming back and he's not a must start for your team fantastic but i got the majority of my teams i don't have him on but the one team that i do have him on it's like i've been waiting on this guy for weeks right i'm still in the playoff hunt and that's fantastic but here comes mark ingram and great of course i got Le'Veon bell out on almost all my teams it's killing me so if you got mark ingram coming back good for you and for me like i don't see you'd have to have one of those top eight backs to not I was going to say know, to not have him as a must start I was going to say if you two had, of them you'd you have, have to have Jordan Howard as your second or third running back but he's got to buy this week I so yeah uh, does it right the Bears yeah are the Bears on so that, that's not a good but let's just say theoretically if Jordan Howard was to be playing sure I'm taking Mark Ingram and putting him right over Jordan Howard all right there you go well I think I think it's an interesting discussion to be had I think you know i I came out. We we had a Patreon show. We talked about Alvin Kamara and all that stuff. And you know, I, I I I not that I was ever down on Alvin Kamara. I just wasn't putting him as high as everybody else. But I mean, right now he deserves to be at the top end of every single draft from here on out until further notice. Yeah. I mean, well, what he's doing is ridiculous. And there's these forty burgers spread right. into these first four forties and thirties. It's been stupid. It's, it's been awesome. He's on pace, I think. I did the math for like 140 catches, 1,400 yards, and 20 receiving touchdowns or something yeah. like that, which that'd be like the best wide receiver hit, like season in the history of seasons of yeah. wide receivers, maybe. Uh, so that's obviously, I don't think that's sustainable, but that's that. That's obviously the floor, and I don't think much of that gets affected by Mark Ingram. I do think this helps the defense out with Mark Ingram coming back. Up until this last game, you hadn't seen a ton of rushing production um, he had from Alvin Kamara. He had 29 yards week one, 46 in week two, 66 in week three, uh, on 16 carries, which yards per carry. That's not the worst. There, it's 4.1. But then last week against the Giants, he gets you 19 for 134, which was really ele- elevated by that 49-yard scamper he had. The, at the useless end. run at the end of the game that really just yeah put yeah. Up. But I mean, you still, you're 18 for 100 without that, so that's still really good. Well, you're 18 for you know. 130 minus 50, so that's 80. Oh, you just said, I thought you said 118, 19 for 140 something. 134. Okay, so yeah, 84. Um, 84 and then minus a touchdown. Right. Minus a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. So that was a, that was that a huge was a, play. Yeah, that's still a, having a good play. That's a slap in the face there. to anybody you're playing. Yeah. He went oh. from 34 to 45 points or something like that. Yeah. Or, or 29 to 41 or something, uh, which is pretty crazy. But I, I think I'm excited about having Mark Ingram come back. I'm 0-4 in one league in a dynasty league with Mark Ingram. And, I mean, I'm only two games out of the playoff race right now. Everybody that's in that fifth and sixth spot is 2-2. Two and two. That's right. That's, that's you know? a good point, Jay Wayne. When you're, when you, what, what, depending on what your team looks like right now for, your, for the playoffs, you don't have to look at that top two and three teams. You got to be looking at that last one or two teams in the playoffs. And really, if, you're, if you've gotten lucky – are unlucky and you're sitting down there and Casey and I, we got one team in the FFPC where we got the best roster in the league and this week was our first win. We're one and three. Barely got any victory points in the FFPC. And we, we're we not chasing those top teams. We're chasing that last team in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what you're looking for when you're deciding whether your team, your year is shot or not. Well, you're not, you're, there's no catching the 4 no team if you're 0 and 4. You don't have to. Right. Just catch that last team and sneak in and then just disrupt. Just right. if you if you got a good solid team go in there and, and make some hay. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I kind of want to ship him out. I kind of want to keep him out. I don't know what to do. But you're plugging him this week. Who's next? I got to plug him in this week for sure in that league. 